Hey everyone, welcome to Build. We are live from London with one of the biggest stars of The Only Way is Essex. He can now add author to his CV, having penned his very first book on a subject very close to his heart, French Bulldogs. Please give it up for Pete Wicks. <laughs> now, if you have any questions for Pete, I'm sure you will, you can tweet us at Build Series LDN, or if you watch on Facebook, leave a comment and we'll try and get to as many of them throughout the course of our chat as possible. Pete, welcome to Build. Thanks for having me. Pleased to be here. How the devil are you? I'm really well. I'm suffering a little bit from man flu slash a three-day hangover, but I'm, I'm all right. <laughs> we'll go with the man flu. Right, let's dive straight in. Tell us about the new book, For the Love of Frenchies, because I know it means a lot to you. How did the book come about? So uh, I've been doing quite a lot of work over the last year, two years, with different dogs charities. Um, and obviously I've, I've got, well, I did have two French Bulldogs. One of mine died uh, in 2016. He had a heart attack. Um, when he was only three because he had a heart murmur from birth. Then I rescued another French bulldog um, from Dogs Trust who was smuggled in via uh, Lithuania in a puppy smuggling scheme, which is something that's going on quite a bit at the minute. And uh, I think because of that, it sort of made me want to raise awareness for puppy smuggling. And I've been to Korea to in the dog meat trade. We rescued 173 dogs in December. Um, and it was just about raising awareness, really. And it's something that... I mean, I never thought I'd write my own book. I mean, come on, do you know what I mean? <laughs> but, um, but yeah, no, it was, it was a really good experience for me. They're actually, um, you're not alone in, the, in your, your love for them because they've actually just become the UK's most popular breed, haven't they, overtaken Labradors? 100%, completely understandable though, because they are the best, genuinely. I love all dogs, but yeah. French Bulldogs are the one. What do you think is the appeal of French Bulldogs? They're just right little donuts, aren't they, really? <laughs> do you know what I mean? Like they, they just, do you know what, I like big dogs, but I don't have a lot of space for a big dog at the minute, so. French Bulldogs are like a big dog in a small dog's body. Um, but yeah, they're amazing. You mentioned um, one of your dogs sadly died, Ernest, wasn't it? How, yeah. how much did that affect you? Do you know, it's a really weird thing because I'm not like, um, well, unless you watch Tally, believe it or not, I'm not particularly <laughs> a, an emotional geezer, unless it's to do with certain people. Uh, but, um, <laughs> but it affected me really, really badly. I mean, it was the first time that I'd really had anything that, I had responsibility for, like, you know, having, a, like, another life was I having a responsibility for me. And I know it sounds stupid because people are going, it's just a dog, but he was like having a kid. So uh, so when 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 Ernest died, it, it, I mean, it, I went off the rails a little bit. And it's the first time the book's the first time I've really spoken about it. Was that the catalyst for the book? Um, yeah, it was in a way, yeah, because it was just... If you're not a dog owner, I don't think you understand that connection that you potentially have with a dog. So it's sort of trying to make other people understand. And also, with what happened to, to Ernest and, and how much French Bulldogs have been in the press recently, there's been a lot of articles and a lot of people wanting to ban French Bulldogs as a breed or the short-nosed breeds, basically. So Mastiffs, Pugs, because of the irregular breeding and the rogue breeders that breed them specifically for the way they look rather than a healthy dog. Um, it was just about you know raising awareness and the fact that it's not the dog's fault or the breed's fault, it's the donuts that breed them, basically. Yeah. Um, obviously, illegal breeding and the importation can really affect the health of a dog. Can you just tell us a bit more, for anyone that might be thinking to get a Frenchie, what they can do to sort of avoid falling into those traps? Uh, where Frenchies have become so popular, and it's not just Frenchies, it's any dog. Every, every, every breed of dog has got different uh, health issues that may come with them. And I think a lot of people will buy dogs based on the way they look. So it's like an aesthetic thing, like it's like an accessory type thing. And to be honest with you, this, this is sort of what I've said in the book, is when I first got Ernest as a Frenchie, I got a Frenchie because they, they look good, basically. I didn't really understand or, or research what responsibility that will come with in terms of the health issues. Um, and I think part of the book and, and the message from the book is that actually if you are looking to get a dog, you need to get the right breed for you that fits around your lifestyle, not just get something because it looks good, if that makes sense. Um, but obviously with, with, with Frenchies, they suffer really bad with heart problems, sometimes skin problems, being a short-nosed breed. Um, their breathing is, is I mean, it's, it, it can be quite bad if they're bred specifically to have that short nose. Um, and where they're quite an expensive breed as well. I mean, Ernest, when I first got Ernest, he was quite an expensive dog to have. Mm -hmm. So that's why they've been smuggled in from places in Eastern Europe and sold in car parks for a grand so that you don't have to pay three, four thousand pounds from breeders. But obviously by doing that, the dogs are interbred and suffer an awful lot of problems that you don't see until a little bit later in life. So, um, you know, you, you do really need to be careful where you're getting your dogs from. So go to an official breeder. 100% or rescue. Yeah. Adopt, don't shop. That's the new motto <laughs> in life, right? 
Now, I read somewhere that um, having dogs calmed you down a little bit, but you just told me you've got a three-day hangover, apparently. So yeah, I've which one is it? Well, <laughs> do you know what? Because I was on the book tour last week. So the book came out on Thursday, so I was up and down the country for a few days. So I sort of had like a little celebratory night out, and then it was my friend's daughter's birthday. And so it's just a couple of things over the last couple of days. But I have calmed down. I promise you, I have calmed down. <laughs> it's gone from seven nights a week to, to one or two. Oh, well maybe. done. See, that's, that's good, isn't it? It's, it's not pretty bad. good. Now, um, let's talk TOWIE, because the new series starts on ITV2 next month. Is next that right? month, yeah. So we start filming the um, 10th of March, I think we start filming. So that'll be on towards the end of the month. What can we expect, do you think, from this series? Because it's, it's the 22nd series, 20 seconds, it? It's, it's mad, incredible. isn't it? 20 second series, yeah. So 20 second series, it's going to be a completely different one. Um, there's a few people that have gone. There's been a bit of a cull. Um, I'm sure there'll be some new people joining. They won't tell us who, which is a bit of a nightmare, so we'll just have to wait and see. Oh, so you still got to wait and see? Yeah, we don't know. Got no idea. <laughs> we'll turn up somewhere and someone will just be there. Just throw it into a yeah, scene they, with them. Yeah, they, they keep it all, like, secret, stealth. What do you think is the secret to that show's continued success? Because people still really love that show, don't they? Do you know what it is? It's um, it's just light-eyed, isn't it? It's, it's like normal people with n the normal everyday stuff that everyone else goes through. Um, so on a Sunday night when, you know, you don't really have to think about watching it. You just sort of enjoy watching other people go through dramas. <laughs> it's always nice. It's like car crash telly, isn't it? You know what I mean? <laughs> it is a bit. Um, have, you, have you got used to that world yet? Like having your sort of life played out to us all? Not really. I, I mean, I still get. I find it really embarrassing. I still get really embarrassed <laughs> because it's um, it's it's just a really strange experience, and especially with what I did before. I worked in the city for ten years before, um, so I used to work for a medical recruitment company. I used to supply consultant doctors to the NHS. So then going from that to then filming Towie and having everyone follow your love life and all that sort of stuff. It's, it's just a completely surreal experience. And I, still, I can't get used to it. I don't think I ever will. Bit of a contrast. Massively. Has there been um, one moment, Towie moment, that's really stuck out for you? Like maybe, like, what's been the hardest thing that you've had to do? I mean, I think Towie? it's fairly obvious for me what the hardest thing was with it. <laughs> um, but obviously, yeah, the last two years have been quite dramatic. Yeah. Um, I've, I've, yeah, I mean, now, this series, it's all happy days. It's, 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 it's going to be a nice, fun one, I think, this series. I'm actually looking forward to it for a change, So, because uh, normally I dread it. Yeah. What about the most fun moment? Fun moment. Do you know what? It's getting to work with... Um, like Lockie's obviously one of my best mates. So we see each other every day, getting to work with him, and me and him always just have a proper laugh. So anything me and him do together is normally really funny. If you can see the outtakes from the show and the bits they're not allowed to show, then... <laughs> I mean, that's a completely different show, that one. <laughs> a late-night version. Exactly, yeah. Um, now, you're returning as a single man, am I right in saying? You are right, yeah. How are you feeling about that? I feel really good. It's um, Obviously, yeah, I've been in a relationship for the last couple of years, but before that, I was always single, so it's kind of going back to what I'm used to, if you like. Um, but no, I'm, I'm enjoying it. I'm enjoying being single. Have you got your eye on anyone at the moment? What, on the show? Yeah. No, I know everyone on the show. It's the problem, <laughs> like, the minute. That's why you never know. Some new people come in. Some new girls come in. We'll have to wait and see. But, um, but no, at the minute, everyone on the show, I, I get them really well with as, as, as friends. I heard um, you had a bit of a soft spot for a certain actress. Margot Robbie. Yes. Oh. Unbelievable. <laughs> I mean, I don't think she's going to be joining Tao anytime soon, but <laughs> if she did, holler me. Yeah. Have you seen, have you seen Antonio yet? No, I haven't. I haven't seen it. Looking quite different in that. Yeah, I mean, maybe not. Do you know what? It's what's inside that counts. I don't know what you're talking about. <laughs> um, no, she, uh, she's unreal, is not she? I like, I like nutty women. That's, that's my problem, I think. Is she nutty? Well, I don't know. It might just be the character she's played. Like, Wolf of Wall Street, the white... Ah, oh, unreal. Well, she I think that was depression. the thing for me. Yeah, that, that done it for me, that one. <laughs> um, so tell us more about Towie. Like, you've been in it for a few years. How long do you see yourself on that show? Or have you, got, have you got a master plan? I haven't got a master plan. Like, Tawi, I enjoy doing, and I'll do it for as long as I enjoy it. Um, I don't know if I'll be like, oh, just like the Ian e Beale of Tawi. Um, I mean, from beginning to end, he's just always there, isn't he? Um, <laughs> but um, I'll just do it for as long as I enjoy it. And at the minute, I'm still enjoying it. Yeah, so. yeah. What about other shows? Obviously, lots of sort of Tawi... The Towie lot have gone on to do Celebrity Big Brother, Strictly, those kind of shows. Would you ever consider 
taking part in one of those? Yeah, 100%. Anything that you, you can do that would be a new experience that you would never get an opportunity to do, I'd be up for doing. Probably not strictly. I mean, I doubt they'd add me anyway, but I've got two left feet. You don't want to see that. Well, so do most people on it, don't they? So. Well, yeah, but they can probably hide it. I'm just, nah, I couldn't, I couldn't be doing that. I, I don't even dance in clubs, mate. I'm a two-step oh, at really? the bar. Nah, that's my thing. I can't be doing all that salsa and all that stuff. No. <laughs> ain't, ain't my bag. What about um, Celebs Go Dating? Because obviously Gemma's been on that and making quite quite an impression. <laughs> what do you think of Gem? She's good, isn't she? Uh, yeah, Celebs Go Dating, I love that show. I think it's amazing. Uh, Rob Beckett, who's the, obviously the comedian, narrates it. I mean, I wish he could like narrate my life. I think he's amazing. He really makes that show. I haven't seen much of this series, um, but Gem, I love Gemma. I absolutely love her. She's a bit nuts, isn't she? But she's you've got to take you've got to take her the right way. But she's such a good girl. She's got heart of gold. So um, it would be an interesting show to do. I don't know how I'd get on. I don't know if I'd want to watch people. Would we like I to see him on it? I think so. I don't know if I would want you lot to watch me try and chat a bird up. <laughs> do you know what I mean? Imagine you get pired and then everyone's watching. It. I don't know. If I, I don't know if I could deal with it. I think we need to get you on there. Next series. We'll see. We'll see what happens. <laughs> Starts here. Um, what's next for you then? So obviously the book's just come out. I've actually got um, a fashion brand launching later this year as well in May, um, which is a completely different thing for me as well. But it's something that I've wanted to do for ages. It's, it's, I think everyone from reality has generally done a fashion brand, haven't they? It's a standard thing. Is but it going to be very much your style? Yeah, so it's going to be like a little bit older yeah. for, for, for people that are a little bit older. It's not going to be like... 20 year olds tracksuits type thing you know what I mean yeah, so yeah. Um, I'm really looking forward to that happening later this year we've got some other bits and bobs coming but well yeah you just have to keep your eyes on big year watch this space everyone we've had um, a question come in on Facebook from Anne Marie Pete I love you on Towie outside of the show how much do you see the other cast mates so we've obviously had quite a big break. Uh, I think it's been three months since we've been filming. So lucky I see basically three, four times a week. Um, I'm effectively the third wheel in his relationship with Yaz. So <laughs> in fact, Valentine's night, I went out for dinner with Lockie and Yaz. Um, Did you? <laughs> listen, he didn't know who to take out, me or her. So, um, so she didn't get a choice. Um, <laughs> I mean, he went home with her, which I was a little bit disappointed about. But, um, so, yeah, I see Lockie all the time. Dan and Diaz, I see on nights out. Chloe, I see and speak to quite a lot. Some of them you don't really see as much, um, but everyone's quite busy. But I do see quite a lot of them um, the majority of the time, like the people that I'm probably closest to. Yeah. And how much time, like, sort of each week are you actually filming for Tower? Does it take up every day or...? Do you know what? It depends. It depends on what you've got going on at the time because if you're involved in quite big storylines, it can be sort of every day, um, which is a struggle. Yeah. Um, but if, you, if there's not much going on for you, if you're just sort of in the background a little bit, you don't film too much. So it all depends, really. Um, but generally, you, you're, you're filming the majority of days. Yeah, yeah. Um, Pete, that's all we've got time for, I'm afraid. The no new, worries. The new series of Tower starts on ITV2 next month. The new book for the love of Frenchies is out now. Go get it. Please give it up for Pete Wicks, everyone. Yeah.